Today on this video, we are going to show insulin resistance. How do you balance insulin resistance with fasting? So, but here are the three things I want to go through. So first, what is causes insulin resistance? And there's a few sneaky things in there. The second is how can fasting help? And the third thing I want to go through is how long should you fast? And stay all the way till the end because I have a special bonus. I'm going to share with you what we're seeing in my resetter community, the best fast for getting people out of insulin resistance and helping them drop weight. So there is a magic number of hours that will help you do that. I'll share that at the end. Okay, first thing, really simply, what causes insulin resistance? So insulin resistance is where the insulin cannot help escort the glucose into the cell. Think of insulin and glucose like a lock and key. And insulin resistance is where those are not working. It would be like you walking up to your house and you go to, to put the key in the door and the key won't go in and you're not allowed in the house. That's what's happening with insulin when you're in insulin resistance. The insulin's job is to manage glucose, which it comes from your, the foods that you're eating. But if it, you are insulin resistant, you end up with too much glucose in your system and that glucose will be stored in fat, your liver, your brain, your eyes. I mean, the extra glucose gets stored in many different places. So in order to get out of insulin resistance or what causes insulin resistance are three major things. Just like I just said, you get too much sugar. So you're eating all day and you're eating high refined flours and you're eating high sugars, you're eating a lot of carbs. So you're just sugar, sugar, sugar all day long, not necessarily table sugar, but you are eating things that are boosting your blood sugar. So the first th thing you wanna change if you wanna get out of insulin resistance is to stop that habit. Second thing and probably the most surprising uh, piece of insulin resistance is you're eating bad oils, not good oils. And this is really important because oils will make those cells very inflamed and make them resistant to getting insulin into them. So you want to switch from good oils to bad oils. I've done several videos on what a good oil is and what a bad oil is. So go back and, and watch that. And then the third thing that causes insulin resistance are toxins. So when we eat fake foods, I don't know if you've heard of obesogens but there are toxins in our water, in our air, in our beauty products. There are toxins in our food. We are living in the most toxic time in human history. And those toxins are making you insulin resistant. So those are the three causes. So how can fasting help? The first thing is when you go to fast, the number one principle of fasting that I want you to remember is we're taking your eating window and we're compressing it. So you're now, even those six meals a day, you can still eat those six meals a day, but what you're doing is you're compressing the time period in which you're eating them. Why would you wanna do that? Because when you go a certain amount of time without food, somewhere around 13 to 15 hours, you start to turn on a switch inside your cells that, that tell your cells to repair. So you start to bring down the inflammation in the cell. You start to repair the outer part of the cell where the insulin's trying to get in. You, all, you start to upregulate hormones like growth hormone. So 13 to 15 hours is that magical time where you start the process of making yourself insulin sensitive again, which is really cool. So you're bringing your sugar down and you're rebooting, resetting those cells so that they can receive the insulin much more efficiently. Second reason that fasting really helps with insulin resistance is that it's a signal. So what I want you to think about is as your blood sugar is starting to go down, what is happening is there'll be a point at which it signals to the liver, hey, guess what? There's no blood sugar coming in. We don't see any coming in, so we better go to an alternate food source. So if you've ever had a hybrid car, you know how this works. You run off of the electric piece for a while, and then when it gets to a certain speed, you click over to the gas. Same thing with this metabolic switch that happens. As you're bringing your blood sugar down, there'll be a point, usually around 13 to 15 hours, where you switch over to fat burner. And in fat burner, this is where we wanna be. So the second reason you wanna fast is so you can make that switch. 
And then the third reason that you want to use fasting is for this inflammatory piece. So you're not only making the metabolic switch, but you're bringing inflammation down so that the cell in general is a healthier cell and will be more sensitive to insulin. Okay, now how long should you fast? This is, I know you guys are like, come on, just say it, just tell me, tell me how long I should fast. I know you want the simple answer and I want you to understand the concept. I'm trying to teach you how to fish, not just give you fish. So I want you to understand this so you're never insulin resistant again. Okay, how long should you fast? So, well, it depends. So I know that's not a fun answer, but here's what it depends on. The first is I want you to work the principles of your food. So I wanna make sure that you're eating low carb, moderate protein, and high fat. So make sure you're doing that. The second thing I want you to work on is removing your toxins out of your life. Get the, the, the chemicals, the preservatives, the nitrites, the red coloring, all that. Get it out of your diet. And then the third piece is I want you to start by mastering intermittent fasting. I want you to get 13 to 15 hours, very comfortable. If you feel good with that, then I want you to move to 17 hours and try to do as many days as you can at 17 hours. If you're comfortable with that, then I want you to throw in some 24 hour fasts. It's that progression as you become more fat adapted that's gonna ultimately have the biggest effect on your insulin resistance. So it's, it's not as simple as throwing one big long fast at it. You wanna go through the fasting ladder where you start with intermittent, go to autophagy, go to 24, which takes me to my bonus fast, which is which is the one that's gonna get you out of insulin, the quickest resistance, the quickest, and that's the 36 hour fast. So we do this in all of the resets that we're doing and something magical happens when you throw a 36 hour fast in every month or so. Especially those of you who are weight loss resistant, you're struggling with managing insulin, you gotta throw a 36 hour fast in every once in a while. That seems to be the time period that unsticks weight. We see it in our resets all the time. Okay, I gotta interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called A Beginner's Guide to a Fasting Lifestyle. And all you've gotta do is click here and you can jump right in. On this video, I wanna talk about vitamin D from a whole new perspective. I wanna show you some science that is showing that when our vitamin D levels dip low, it makes us not only insulin resistant, but it can make us uh, leptin resistant as well. So when you're looking at weight loss resistance, we've gotta bring vitamin D back to the conversation. So on this video, I'm gonna show you what the science says, and then I'm gonna talk about some of the best ways to get your vitamin D levels up. And we have two hormones that we have to have in balance if we want to lose weight. One is insulin. You guys have heard a lot about insulin resistance, and the other is leptin. Insulin is what stores the fat. Leptin is the hormone that burns the fat. So if we want to get out of weight loss resistance, we need both of these hormones to be sensitive. So here's some interesting research that I found. The first one, it was a meta-analysis, so it was like a review, and they looked at all the articles published on vitamin D and insulin resistance on PubMed, which if you're not familiar with PubMed, that is the, the search engine that we go to to get peer-reviewed uh, science articles. And they looked at everything from 1980 all the way up to 2019 all the studies that have, were done on vitamin D and insulin resistance. And they found two major pieces here, looking at all of those studies. One, if you are low in vitamin D, it affected your pancreatic beta cells. These are the cells that have control over insulin actually being secreted. The second thing they noted was that when vitamin D levels go low, it affected the responsiveness of your cells to insulin. So when your vitamin D is low, you're not only having trouble making insulin, and if you can't make insulin, glucose is gonna get stored as fat, but you also have trouble with the cells being responsive to the insulin that is being made. So if you're not familiar with insulin resistance, it is at the root of all immune problems, all weight loss resistant issues. Insulin resistance is rampant and we've got to get you insulin sensitive again. 
And what I found so interesting about this study, which I'll link in my notes, is that we're seeing this low vitamin D has a correlation between the levels that your vitamin D is at and how insulin resistant you are. Now I went on to look at, well, what about leptin resistance? Sure enough, same thing that they saw the lower your vitamin D levels, the higher your leptin levels. So remember, leptin is the hormone that will tell your brain to burn fat. And it needs to be, it's released from the fat cells and it should go up into the brain and tell the hypothalamus, hey, I'm down here. So you want this to be a very efficient system. Well, just having extra leptin doesn't mean you're a better fat burner. doesn't mean you're out of, gonna get out of fat loss resistance anytime soon. You need that leptin to be sensitive. And vitamin D is key to both insulin and leptin sensitivity. So what do we have to do if we're worried about our vitamin D? And there's three things I wanna start off by telling you. One is that if you're struggling with your weight, I don't want you to overlook this key nutrient. So know your vitamin D levels, go get them tested. We'll talk about what the levels mean here in a second. Once you've tested your levels, then let's create a strategy for it. I'm gonna show you my favorite strategies here in one second, so sit tight. And then the last point that I wanna um, deliver to you guys is there's a lot of controversy over what is the proper level. And you know that most people would say 30 is pretty good. We, we measure vitamin D in nanograms, 30 is pretty great. But we want you over 50 for insulin resistance. We want you over 50 for, per, for uh, COVID symptoms, for strong immunity. So on this video, I wanna show you how you get over 50. That's what we're looking for. So there are four major ways that I like to bring vitamin D levels up. The first is just good old fashioned foundation of lifestyle. So make sure that you're eating good fats, not bad fats. If you are eating a lot of bad fats, I don't care how much supplementation you, you take in, those, the, that vitamin D is not going to get into the cells. So our favorite way to get good fats is to lean into some high quality fats like the avocado oils and sunflower, uh, the uh, seed oils like Andreas seed oils. We have one that we recommend that's an immune boosting seed oil. We'll put a link in the, the notes for that. Um, so add in your good oils, take out your bad oils. Second thing is you want to keep your carbohydrate load down. So you don't always have to go keto, but we don't want you on high processed, high refined, that, that raise your, your sugar levels. So watch your blood sugar. Make sure that your blood sugar is trending under 100 at least. It's not trending into 120, 130. Then you really, the third piece of that, of this foundational level is making sure that you are sensitive to not having too many toxins get into your body. So the fake foods, the processed foods with the chemicals in them, they're gonna make your cells more resistant to vitamin D. So that's foundational. Before you go trying to trick out uh, supplementation, I want you to really work on those three principles. Okay, second thing that we've heard a lot is get out in the sun but this is highly variable. There are three variables that will play in how much vitamin D your body can make from the sun. The first is how, how much sun you're getting. Like you gotta get out at noon in, in, in the high sun, you gotta have about 30 minutes of exposure, you gotta have it be on skin, and you gotta do that every day. So if you're committed to that, you can really bring your vitamin D levels up. The second is the darker your skin, the less you'll take that UVB light and turn it into vitamin D. So you're gonna have to probably lean into more su supplementation if your skin is darker. And then those, the third part of the skin exposure is those of you that live in an area with a lot of air pollution. Air pollution can block the UVB light from getting into our skin and can affect how much vitamin D we get. So if you have dark skin, you live in a big city, and you're not getting out every day in the sun at noon, then you're gonna need to look at supplementing with some vitamin D. Now, we can supplement with food, but the food that you gotta eat to get your vitamin D levels up, not so yummy. So there are your oily fishes, your sardines, your mackerels, your salmon. Salmon's not bad, but if you love those, then awesome, go for it. I personally am not a huge fan of that, but that's an option. Second option for foods that raise vitamin D is liver. Okay, also not a huge fan of eating liver, but thank you to Dr. Paul Saladino for his company, Heart and Soil. 
They have an incredible liver supplement. So if you are really working hard to bring your vitamin D levels up, you're committed to getting it over 50, I'd look at, at uh, Paul's heart and soil supplements. Just put liver supplements in the comments and we'll send you a link for that. The other one for those of you that eat meat, grass-fed beef can really bring your vitamin D levels up. But outside of food, out of those foods, that's pretty much it. That's all you can do to bring vitamin D up. Which leads us at the last point and what most people realize when they've measured their, uh, their vitamin D, they wanna bring it up, is you're gonna have to lean into supplementation. But there's some tricks to this as well. So for example, whenever you supplement with vitamin D, you wanna increase vitamin K. So vitamin K and vitamin D together will improve absorption. Add some vitamin C into that, and now you're improving absorption even more. The second part of this is you wanna have a good diversity of microbiome in your gut. So you have to have good gut diversity. Well, not a lot of people have great gut diversity, so you may wanna take your vitamin D with probiotic. What we do in our office is we use a product called DB3 and mix it with a great probiotic. Uh, if you want a link to those supplements, just put uh, vitamin D and probiotic supplement in the comments. And again, we'll send you the link. Um, and then this is really interesting because you guys know how much I love fasting. So I ended up uh, uh, stumbling upon this research because I wanted to know if we fasted, did vitamin D levels go up or down? And they've actually found in research that you can improve your vitamin D levels by as much as 50% over a two to three month period by taking your vitamin D supplement with a meal. So this is one of those supplements that it's more powerful when you eat, it's even more powerful when you eat a fatty meal and now you take your vitamin D, that it'll get, it's more accessible to the cell. So if you take a supplement with vitamin K, with vitamin C, and you're eating a lot of polyphenol, probiotic, prebiotic foods, and then with that meal, you're taking a vitamin D supplement, now we're maximizing our vitamin D reserves. So it's not as simple as supplementation, but what I'm finding, we all need to be fasting, and we all need to be minding our vitamin D levels. And if we do those two things, then we also are able to come out of metabolic syndrome. So there's a lot of nuance here, but what I want you to understand is that if there was one vitamin you needed to bring up for, for weight loss, for immune system, it is vitamin D, and this is how you do it. Okay, are you fasting and you're still not losing weight? Check out this video because you might be missing a key part of your fasting experience that's gonna unlock weight loss. So if you think about it, all the humans that emerged out of that time have the gene that allows us to go without food, and that gene, they believe, is in all of us today. 